Welcome Chameleon Wranglers to your introduction to Bioactive for Chameleons. Today we're to the part where we're actually going to put a substrate in a cage and I'm going to show you how I'm doing it. I've got my Leap Habitat 22 by 17 by 36 inch tall cage here and I need four parts to create this bioactive substrate. The first part is the LECA or clay balls and these are on the bottom of the cage inside that substrate tray. And the purpose of these is so the water drains into these and stays in there without saturating the substrate. Now the way we keep water from getting into the clay balls is we put a substrate barrier on top. This barrier needs to allow water through while keeping the soil out of the clay ball area. So you're going to want to make sure that the soil can't get around the edges of your substrate barrier. Because if the soil gets in and then, then you just got a muddy mess and you have no drainage layer. And once you have your substrate barrier down, you put on the substrate and on top of the substrate, you're going to put a leaf litter. Sounds pretty simple. Let's go ahead and talk about each one of these pieces and where you find them. First of all, the Leica, these clay balls. They're actually commonly available in horticultural uh, stores because plant keepers use them for the same reason that we do. It's for a drainage layer. Now, you don't need a whole lot of these. Uh, I try to have a layer about half inch to an inch at the bottom of my cages. And as you see on the website shopping list, you can find them at Amazon. It's, it's pretty simple. The substrate barrier that goes on top of the balls can be any number of materials. All it has to do is keep the soil out and allow the water through. Now, I'm gonna be using some uh, sunshade because I have some of this laying around. On the shopping list on the website, I have an official substrate barrier that you can buy that was specifically designed for this purpose. Now, what comes next is the most important thing, and that's the bioactive substrate. Now, if you look at the ingredients, you see bark, you see moss, you see all sorts of things you probably haven't heard of. And yes, it's best to get these specially made bioactive substrates because they're specially formulated to be light and airy and provide all those different surfaces that encourages the bioactive nature of it. Now, I'm gonna admit that I'm just now starting to learn more and more about these bioactive substrates and boy, have I tapped into something that's gonna take me a long time to study. It's an amazing world when you start getting into the substrates and creating bioactivity within your cages. And so I'm very excited to share that journey with you probably over the next year or two. Until I figure all of this out, I'm going to be using the pre-made mixes that you can find at BioDude or at Leap. And there are many other places that offer a bioactive substrate. But since I'm buying things from Leap, it's very easy to put that into the shopping cart. The Leap website recommends three bags per 22 by 17 footprint. I prefer four because I like to have a little bit of an extra mound and after time the bioactive substrate settles and you're going to want to put more on and then the final thing that goes up on top is the leaf litter now where do we get leaf litter you certainly can buy leaves off the internet or you can go find them but i've been around long enough to know it's probably not as easy as just picking leaves off of the ground and so I went ahead and I asked Josh Halter, the bio dude, this question, and I'm gonna bring him on right now so he can answer it. How do we choose what to put on top? And if we're going to collect leaves of our own, how do we know which yeah. leaves to collect? That is a great question. So when you look at the leaves of the leaves, the branches, you need to look at where they come from. It's no different than your substrate ingredients. You need to look at where these leaves, where this bark came from. If, for example, you want, you found some awesome looking bark slabs into, you're walking outside and you see bark slabs on the floor, oh, these would be great for my isopod cultures. What, what tree is it from? Better not be from a freaking pine tree type of thing. So, so when you are looking at what is, if you want to go outside, you want to make sure that the leaves that the tree are coming from that that tree is safe for your animals. You don't want to use a tree that has a lot of sap, okay? You don't want to use a tree that, you know, that has a byproduct, you know, that if you ate it can make you sick, okay? So, you know, I like to recommend any oak species. So there is hundreds of oak species in the United States. You know, there's, bam there's, ba uh, there's bamboo leaves, there's magnolia, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of different types of leaves that you can use. But at the end of the day, you want to make sure it's not from a source that is toxic to your animals. 
what you also want to look at is where they come from on the ground. So it's likely not a good idea to go get your leaf litter from your front yard. If you spray your yard with Roundup, um, guess what? There's going to be byproducts, by Roundup byproduct on those leaves. And it only takes one bad leaf to get that crap in your tank. And when it's in your tank, it's in there for good. And you ain't getting it. So when you, what you can also use for top layer, we talked about leaf litter. I love, I mix everything together. So when I use leaf litter, I don't just dump it on the top. I take it and I thoroughly mix it. And what I will also use is cork bark chunks. So how I told you how my Terraflora has the virgin cork bark granules in it that are the size of my pinky nail. Mm -hmm. So what I'll take is I'll take the larger pieces of cork flats that I have, they're about this big, and I'll put about a dozen pieces in the substrate depending on how much I'm using, and I'll mix that thoroughly throughout the substrate. And then you can also use things like palm leaves, like the palm fronds you get on Palm Sunday. Those are very, very good because it's very fibrous. So when you are looking at bark and when you're looking at leaves, if you look at a magnolia, you can feel it's thick. You can feel that it has a very dense, fibrous nature. The more fibrinous the material, the better it is. Bamboo is another extreme, like actual bamboo is an extremely beneficial substrate additive. Because essentially what happens is because it's so fibrinous, it absorbs water. And as it absorbs water, the fibers expand. When those fibers expand, it creates a surface area that is that is significantly more impactful. Kind of like when you're using a fish tank filter and you need to use bio balls to trap your beneficial bacteria because of all the surface air. It's no different in your soil. What's gonna happen is with how like this it's gonna be, okay? Your mycorrhizae, your archaea bacteria, and your cleanup crew are gonna get right on it. And because you have an extended surface area in your soil, it's going to become a very positive microbial hotspot to help your tank cycle. Okay, that makes sense. So I'll typically mix all of that together. Me personally, I've been able to collect leaves in my yard and in some semi-wild places around my house. I consider it a very good sign if I see isopods on the leaves when I'm collecting them. I carefully inspect each leaf before it goes in, and you can always boil it as Josh mentions. I start by putting a thin layer of leaves on top of the substrate, and then I mix it all in before I put another layer of leaves on with sticks and such. And then I'll put other pieces of wood in, they'll decay into the system, they'll provide nice places for isopods to hang out. And then it's time to get the hydration going into this system. And then after that, maybe we're ready for the cleanup crew those isopods and springtails and we make this bioactive but before that we want to hear from michael nash i want to ask him how does he make a system bioactive and so that's coming in the next episode this is just one episode in a series about bioactive systems for chameleons subscribe to chameleon academy to get the whole thing and i'll see you very soon mm -hmm.